Okay, everyone, let's take a look at chapter four, electrical safety. Electrical shock is a condition that results anytime a body becomes part of an electrical circuit. The limited, restricted, and prohibited approach boundaries protect personnel from electric shock. An excess of electrons produces an arc during electrostatic discharge. All ESD sensitive components should be labeled so that they are handled properly. Safety labels are used to indicate a situation with different degrees of likelihood of death or injury to personnel. Motor guards or housings are used as protection from rotating parts of a motor or anything connected to the motor, such as the drive shaft. This will be section 4.2, lockout, tagout. Equipment must be locked out and or tagged out before installation, preventative maintenance, or servicing is performed. Lockout devices are available in various shapes and sizes that allow for the lockout of standard control devices. Lockout tagout kits comply with OSHA lockout tagout standards. This will be section 4.3, personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment is used to reduce the possibility of an injury. Eye protection must be worn to prevent eye or face injuries caused by flying particles, contact arcing, or radiant energy. Hand protection includes gloves worn to prevent injuries to hands caused by cuts or electrical shocks. Knee pads are used to provide protection and comfort to technicians who spend considerable time on their knees. Rubber insulating matting provides protection from electrical shock when work is performed on live electrical circuits. Article 430 of the NEC covers requirements for motors, motor circuits, and controllers. Grounding provides a direct low resistance path to earth in order to limit the voltage to ground. A GFCI compares the amount of current in the ungrounded hot conductor with the amount of current in the neutral conductor. This will be section 4-4, fire safety. An oily waste can seals out oxygen to prevent spontaneous combustion. Fire extinguisher classes are based on the combustibility of the material. Article 500 of the NEC covers hazardous locations. An energized electrical work permit documents all electric work performed on the premises. We section 4-5 confined spaces. Oxygen deficient atmospheres and combined spaces can cause life-threatening conditions. For maximum safety, procedures for entering a confined space must follow established OSHA standards. Confined space entry permit forms document preparations, procedures, and required equipment. All right, everyone, that was it for that session. Next session will be Control Logic. See you over there.